Let's move on now to the RNA viruses. We will further classify these into those that have envelopes and those that do not. The RNA viruses that do not have envelopes are rheoviruses, picornaviruses, hepiviruses, and caliciviruses. The rheoviruses have double-stranded linear RNA genomes. They're the only ones that have double-stranded RNA. They have icosahedral capsid symmetry and include rheoviruses, which for medical importance are the Colorado tick fever viruses, and rotavirus, which is the number one cause of fatal diarrhea in children in the world. The picornavirus family is a single-stranded positive linear RNA genome and an icosahedral capsid symmetry. It includes the polioviruses, so for polioviruses remember that we have two vaccines, the Salk and the Sabin vaccines, and we also have the intramuscular as well as the oral polio vaccines, IPV and OPV. It also contains echovirus, which causes aseptic meningitis, rhinovirus, which is associated with common colds, the Coxsackie viruses, which include aseptic meningitis pictures as well as herpingina, febrile pharyngitis, hand, foot, and mouth disease, and myocarditis, and hepatitis A virus, which causes acute viral hepatitis. The Hep E virus family is a single-stranded plus RNA genome, icosahedral capsid, and the medically important Hep E virus is hepatitis E virus, so Hep E virus. Khaleesi viruses have a single-stranded plus RNA genome and an icosahedral capsid, and among these are the Norwalk virus, which causes viral gastroenteritis. Now let's talk about the families that do have envelopes. We will add another classification step here and distinguish them by whether they have plus or minus strand RNA genomes. Remember that the plus strand is able to be directly translated by host cell ribosomes into viral proteins, whereas the negative strand viruses require an intermediate transcription step using machinery that the virus carries with it. The single-stranded plus viruses include the flaviviruses, the togaviruses, the retroviruses, the coronaviruses, and the orthomyxoviruses. Flaviviruses have icosahedral capsid symmetry and include HCV or hepatitis C, yellow fever, dengue virus, and the encephalitis viruses, St. Louis encephalitis and West Nile encephalitis virus. The viruses also have icosahedral capsid symmetry and include the rubella virus, or the cause of German measles, and eastern and western equine encephalitis viruses. Retroviruses have an icosahedral capsid symmetry as well, linear RNA genome. They contain reverse transcriptase, and we think about HIV classically as the retrovirus, but among this family is also HTLV, which can cause T-cell leukemia. Coronaviruses, again single-stranded plus RNA genome, have a helical capsid symmetry. The coronaviruses can cause the common cold and have also been associated with SARS. Orthomyxoviruses are single-stranded and have negative RNA genomes, a helical capsid symmetry, and the classic orthomyxovirus is the influenza virus. To continue on with the negative linear RNA genomes, we have the paramyxoviruses, the rhabdoviruses, the flaviviruses, the arenaviruses, the bunyaviruses, and the delta virus. The paramyxoviruses include parainfluenza, which causes croup, RSV, which is associated with bronchiolitis in babies, rubiola, or measles, and mumps. So just looking at the family, paramyxoviruses, you have P, R, and M. So parainfluenza, RSV, measles, and mumps. Rhabdoviruses have a helical capsid symmetry and the rabies viruses among this family. Phyloviruses also have helical capsid symmetry and include Ebola and Marburg hemorrhagic fever viruses, which are often fatal. Arenaviruses have a helical capsid symmetry as well. There's two segments to their genome, and they include LCMV, which is lymphocytic choriomeningitis virus, and the loss of fever encephalitis virus, which is spread by mice. Bunyaviruses have segmented genome as well. There's three segments in their genome. They have a helical capsid symmetry. They include the California encephalitis virus, the sand fly and rift valley fever virus, the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever virus, and the hantavirus, which causes hemorrhagic fever as well, and also been associated with pneumonia. The delta virus family is a non-segmented circular single-stranded RNA with a helical capsid, and the important virus for this family is HDV, or hepatitis D virus. So remember, 
D for delta. Now, as I mentioned, negative-stranded viruses must have their negative-stranded genome transcribed into a positive or plus-stranded RNA in order to be translated by the host cell ribosome. In order to accomplish this, the viruses bring their own RNA-dependent RNA polymerase when they infect a host cell. The negative-stranded viruses include arenaviruses, bunyaviruses, paramyxo- and orthomyxoviruses, phyloviruses, and rhabdoviruses. So remember the mnemonic for this. Always bring polymerase or fail replication. Arena, bunya, paramyxo, orthomyxo, phylo, and rhabdo. Now among the viruses that have segmented genomes, they're all RNA viruses. They include the bunya viruses, the orthomyxo viruses, the arena viruses, and the rio viruses. So remember BOR, bunya, orthomyxo, arena, and rio. The influenza virus actually consists of eight segments of negative-stranded RNA. These segments, as we mentioned, can undergo reassortment if two virions infect the same host cell. They can rearrange their genomes and cause what we call antigenic shift that can lead to the worldwide pandemics that we see with the flu. Let's begin our discussion of pathogenic RNA viruses now, starting with the picornaviruses. So here we have polio, echovirus, rhinovirus, coxsackie virus, and hepatitis A virus. The RNA from the picornaviruses is translated into one long polypeptide and then cleaved by proteases into functional viral proteins. The picornaviruses are known to cause aseptic or viral meningitis, except for rhinovirus and hep A. So just look at the name of the virus family, picornavirus. So pico, meaning small, RNA viruses. And the way to remember which ones are in this family is to remember perch on a peak. So perch, P-E-R-C-H, polio, echo, rhino, coxsackie, hep A, on a peak, pico RNA viruses. Rhinovirus is a picornavirus that's non-enveloped. Again, RNA, because it's the picornavirus family, it is the cause of the common cold. There are more than 100 different serologic types of the rhinovirus, and it's for that reason that we most likely can get colds over and over again. We're seeing different serologic types of the rhinovirus. Remember that this virus is acid labile, so it can be destroyed by stomach acid. Therefore, we don't see GI tract infections with rhinovirus like we see with other picornaviruses. To remember this, just picture a rhino with a runny nose. Yellow fever virus is a flavivirus. It's also an arbovirus that's transmitted by the Aedes mosquitoes. The virus has a monkey or a human reservoir. The symptoms of yellow fever include high fever, a black vomitus, and jaundice. You can also see councilman bodies with pathologic stains because of acidophilic inclusions in liver staining. So remember, flavy translates to yellow, so flavy virus, yellow fever virus. The rotavirus is the most important global cause of infantile gastroenteritis. It's a segmented, double-stranded RNA virus. So this is one of those rheoviruses. Major cause of acute diarrhea in the United States during the winter especially in daycare centers and in kindergartens where it's passed. It causes villous destruction in the gastrointestinal epithelium with atrophy that leads to decreased absorption of sodium and thereby decreased absorption of water, hence diarrhea. So remember, rotavirus, rota, right out the anus. Influenza viruses are orthomyxoviruses. They're enveloped, single-stranded RNA viruses with a segmented genome. They contain hemagglutinin, which promotes viral entry, and neuraminidase, which promotes progeny virion release. It's responsible for the worldwide influenza epidemic, so remember that flu is not caused by the bacteria H. flu, it's caused by the influenza virus. Patients that are infected with influenza virus, however, are at risk for fatal bacterial superinfections. Remember that we associate the influenza virus with rapid genetic changes, and this is why you have to get a flu vaccine every year, because it seems that every year a new strain of the influenza virus comes out. Remember that the vaccine is a killed viral vaccine, and it's reformulated each fall to protect, at first it was just the elderly and healthcare workers, but it's becoming more and more common to routinely vaccinate children, as well as those that are exposed to children as well. When we talk about influenza viruses, we can talk about genetic shift and genetic drift and what those mean. So genetic shift is a reassortment of the viral genome, such as when human flu A virus recombines with swine flu A virus within a certain host, and we have that reassortment of the segmented genome that we talk about. This is what leads to the pandemic forms of the flu virus. Genetic drift 
is changes in minor antigens based on random mutation, what we would think about with a mutating type of virus. This is more associated with small epidemics that we see. So to keep shift and drift separated in your mind, remember that sudden shift is more deadly than gradual drift. Rubella virus is a toga virus. It causes the German measles, or more commonly known as the three-day measles. It's characterized by fever, lymphadenopathy, arthralgias, and a fine truncal rash. It causes mild disease in children, but can cause serious congenital disease and is one of the torch infections. Paramyxoviruses are most commonly associated with diseases in childhood. They include those that cause parainfluenza, more commonly known as croup, which is characterized by a seal-like barking cough, also mumps and measles, as well as RSV, which causes respiratory tract infection and can lead to bronchiolitis and pneumonia in infants. All of the paramyxoviruses contain surface F protein or fusion protein, which causes respiratory epithelial cells to fuse and form multinucleated cells, which can be used to diagnose these viruses. Palavizumab is used in RSV to neutralize F protein, and it's the vaccine known as Synergis, which we give to those that are most at risk to suffer severe infections from RSV. Rubiola virus, or measles virus, is another paramyxovirus. It's classically associated with coplic spots on exam, which are red spots with blue-white centers that we see on the buccal mucosa. It can cause SSPE, or subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, years later. It can cause acute encephalitis, which we see in about 1 in 2,000 infections, and giant cell pneumonia, which we see rarely and most commonly associate with those that are immunosuppressed. The rash will spread from head to toe, and we don't want to confuse this with roseola caused by HHV6. So remember the three C's of measles, cough, coryza, and conjunctivitis, and then we can throw a K in there looking for coplic spots. The mumps virus, another paramyxovirus that we mentioned, symptomatically it includes parotitis or swelling of the parotid glands, or chitis, which is inflammation of the testes, and aseptic meningitis. It can also cause sterility because of this orchitis, especially if you have infection after puberty. So remember, mumps make your parotid glands and testes as big as pom-poms, P-O-M, parotitis, orchitis, and aseptic meningitis. The rabies virus is part of the rhabdovirus family. We diagnose rabies by using electron microscopy looking at negri bodies that are cytoplasmic inclusions in the neurons that are infected by the rabies virus. It has a bullet-shaped capsid, which is unique from the other capsids of the other valuable families. Rabies has a long incubation period. This is important to remember for therapy. It takes weeks to months in order to cause symptoms, which lead to fatality. What this allows us to do is to immunize people after exposure and be able to build up immunity before the rabies virus starts to cause damage. So the progression of the disease, remember, you start with a general type of viral picture, including fever and malaise. This will then increase to agitation, photophobia, and hydrophobia, which will then further lead to paralysis and coma and eventually death. Remember that rabies virus is practically 100% fatal. It's most commonly seen from infected bats, raccoons, and skunks that then bite people, uh, more so than what we see from dog bites in the United States. Rabies virus actually travels in a retrograde fashion, starting in the peripheral neurons and working its way towards the CNS. On the boards, one of the names of the game in virology is Name That Rash. So let's look at a few of the rash-causing viruses, starting with rubella. Rubella is a toga virus. It causes the German three-day measles. Rubiola, remember, is the regular measles caused by paramyxovirus. Remember your three Cs plus your coplic spots there. Roseola is caused by herpes virus, HHV6. And remember the clinical picture, high fevers followed by a diffuse maculopapular rash. Varicella, the classic chickenpox or zoster rash, that's a herpes virus. And variola is a pox virus which causes smallpox, so associate smallpox with variola. Again, no longer present outside of labs, but you might see something pop up about germ warfare with variola. And that concludes this section of the lecture.